switching hands. Switching hands. Me? I'm talking to the camera, Dora. Where's the camera? Oh, there. Going faster, faster, faster. Oh, keep going. If you're cold, go inside. Switch your hands. So we might have a cold. I think we have a cold. We have a cold. This is amazing. A unidirectional drill done by hand crank. It's a one inch diameter. Sorry about the, let's see here. That's amazing. That really works. See it? <laughs> My daughter's watching. See here I have rebar. With a corded handle. So we did pine on pine as a core two. As you can see, I filled the notch pretty high because it's an inch and a half high. There's all the weights. Alright, and welcome to science of the basic form of the wheel drill however we're discussing the uh, fire drill of the gauchos of the pampas and uh, as you just saw uh, I did a uh, core 2 of pine with a uh, rebar bent in the shape of a bow now I still haven't been able to find a uh, stick a crooked stick as said by Dave Pearson if you've been watching the video uh, and I hope you you have watched it it's, uh, it's definitely good to see um, in my area I still haven't found a piece of wood that uh, come that is that structure is that shape that I think is actually can work the other thing you notice too about his stick it's it's um, uh, it's almost in the shape of a question mark so how the point comes out, like the curve of a question mark, but the, the very bottom is like a, a stem. So the axis is straight as it goes into the base. So it's not, as you would see in some of the illustrations, where it's a, uh, it's a, a, a crescent spinning around tidally locked, as I mentioned before. Um, because this angle going around in the base is just not going to mate. It's just not going to happen. I think it's just um, I'm highly suspicious that could work. Um, I did try it a few times, and uh, I just can't see how I could balance things out to even get something going on an angle like that to even work. So the axis still has to be straight up and down if you're going to do a drill method. Um, so in most of the literature I have read online and in the Barbarian's book, um, it explains that it very much looks like a 
carpenter's brace. This is a carpenter's brace, which I bought at a garage sale. And uh, well, actually, while I was looking for them, I found I found a few of them, so I bought a whole bunch of them. Um, but uh, so I've set it up here where um, I put in a ratchet bit, and that fits a uh, ratchet. Uh, uh, 13 sixteenths which is this actually the same thing as the as the rebar you saw I'm gonna redo it here so we're gonna do the uh, traditional method in the way that it's explained where there's uh, you crouch over the uh, stick and I'm gonna have a pressure sternal brace I'm gonna take this board of uh, walnuts and this pad, the pad's going to go on my chest, and the walnut is going to support the um, the turning part of the brace, so I can bear down as much of my weight as I possibly can, and uh, and try and get that going. So I have my shoes here on my knees, kind of hold everything together, and what else? Let's see, let's widen that up. Uh, we're going to do a brand new uh, mating. So this is the one that I used for the rebar. So this is a new one here. Uh, it hasn't been mated yet, but it does have a notch in it. So as you can see, there's nothing in there. So it's very high, so we're going to take some sawdust. Throw some sawdust in there. And I have to kind of get prepared to uh, <laughs> go for an endurance mission here. All right. So uh, we're going to stay with the same pine core too. Um, I suspect that uh, wood's harder than uh, in the oak. Jaka tests are going to start uh, can't can't really work, or I, I should say, are going to be much harder to do. Uh, physically in a crouch method because because uh, you're gonna lack speed I think speed is an important issue when you're especially working with much much harder woods not just a, a massive amount of pressure but I think you need a lot of speed and I think with the harder woods um, if you're lacking the speed uh, pressure is just not going to be enough so another thing I want to mention is I think this is very much uh, like a Egyptian drill where uh, because of this handle uh, you can have massive amounts of torque you have excellent turning power the only thing you're really lacking though is is speed and uh, I think that's one of the things you really have to make up for with time duration and a whole lot of pressure but uh, I think the hardness, the density of the wood needs to be within human limits. Um, so your average, I'm going to say probably your average bow drill wood is going to work. But things uh, beyond the Egyptian drill to the uh, higher toggle drill levels that are possible, I think are going to be uh, nearly uh, improbable to, to balance. All right. So uh, again, uh, I think a flexible stick is not is not going to work. It's not ever going to work. Actually, I think the illustrations are suspicious. That that's not really correct. I I do believe that Dave Pearson's uh, structure of his stick, where it's a very stout stick, and uh, it doesn't flex, it doesn't bend, it doesn't give way. It can withstand a lot of pressure and uh, can withstand the turning torque with that pressure without breaking. I mean, obviously the, the wood bowing out with the pressure would be reason for it to just snap because it doesn't have that. It's, it's basically a takeori waiting to happen in a sense. So um, I think the, the structure of the stick has to be just right and within balance. So, uh, 
I, in the last one I did use the uh, pressure box um, as I was trying this method out. I mean, obviously, if, if I was going to test something, I'm going to test it without, without uh, it being uh, too detrimental to, to my energy and my, <laughs> my well-being. But what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to do the technique as it's said uh, where it's in a, you're in a crouch and it's resting on your sternum. So uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna get to it. There, just gotta hold this in place. And I think we're ready to just go for it. Basically, just laying on the brace. Oh, I'm getting smoke. I'm gonna move up a little bit. Get in position better. I'm just trying to get into a position of comfort. <laughs> It's not cool down, it definitely is now. I think that's a little better. I think the walnut was too large. So I'm bearing down all my weight. No, the burning pine. Getting some dust. I'm going to switch hands. Have a look. And we did it. That was quicker than I thought. Whew. And thank goodness. <laughs> So, I say that there are uh, primary eight basics. However, the Gaucho's drill has been written about for a very, very long time. And uh, even the Barbarian's book goes back to 1923. So obviously the method was known long before then. So, um, 
I'd like to take a moment to uh, dedicate the Gauchos fire drill of the Pampas as the honorary uh, primal ninth basic. Because <laughs> it's just, it's just awesome. It's nice to know that this is, it really does exist. It's, uh, it's not something that, um, uh, well, it's, it's definitely, did it need to be debunked? I mean, here it is, like myth, bust, myth busters kind of thing. So, uh, keeping everything in balance, this definitely does work. It's good to have another, another method under your belt to know what the variables, when they're in balance, what they can do. Okay. So from this point on, I really wish I could find uh, my own gaucho stick, but I'll I'll keep looking, obviously. Um, so from this point on, we're going to do Art of the Variation, and we're going to uh, do the what I call the wheel drill, and I'll explain that next, okay? We're going to do three variations of that. Alright, here we go. Keep going. 